So here we are again. NPM was compromised. If this little thing is your JavaScript project running on NPM, this huge thing around it is the new Shaiholud 2.0 worm that compromises your app and steals all your credentials. What's really interesting is that this is just one of the latest attacks in a coordinated effort to compromise NPM. And, by the looks of it, web dev security is what we call in professional terms a good old-fashioned shit show. In late August 2025, attackers exploited a vulnerable GitHub Actions workflow in the NX build system to steal NPM tokens and publish malicious packages. This affected projects with millions of weekly downloads. Infected versions contained a file called telemetry.js, which was automatically called as part of a post-install script added in package.json. There wasn't anything fancy or complicated about the actual code. First, it tries to locate crypto wallets, SSH keys, environment files and other sensitive data. Then, it tries to read GitHub CLI tokens and NPM usernames. If a GitHub token is found, it silently creates a new repository called Singularity in your account and uploads a double-encoded blob of the collected data. And, finally, it appended a shutdown command line to your shell startup files to shut down your machine on login, which, if you ask me, is actually kind of rude. Why are you the way that you are? Funny enough, the script tries to make use of LLMs as well, so, if a large language model client is installed, it will attempt to use it to enumerate more secrets from the system. So that's what you get for installing and trusting AI coding agents. Then, just a couple of weeks later, the attacker strikes again. This time around, the scale, scope and impact of the attack were significantly larger. And, while the gist of the malicious code remains the same, the code itself has evolved now into a full worm. A worm, for those unfamiliar with cybersecurity, is a self-replicating malware that spreads without any user interaction. Unlike a virus, which typically needs to attach to a host file and be executed by the user, a worm can automatically propagate across systems or networks on its own. Again, the attackers are scanning for secrets, but this time around they are using Trufflehog, which is a pretty popular tool conveniently created to help developers discover security vulnerabilities in their systems. Then, it creates a repo named Shaihulud under the compromised account and commits a JSON dump containing system info, environment variables, and collected secrets. Also, in order to propagate and amplify the attack, the worm attempts to update packages the compromised maintainer controls and then iterates the victim's accessible repositories, making them public. In other words, once they are in, you are kind of screwed. As a quick side note, here are the mandatory 10 seconds of random trivia for those of you who are watching my videos not only for the boring and geeky tech stuff, but also for the culture and drama. Awesome trivia in 10 seconds. Shei Hulud are giant sandworms from the Dune books and movies, which roam the deserts of a faraway planet and can swallow entire buildings at once. Their name translates to Thing of Eternity, which is fitting, because that's how long the NPM ecosystem will keep suffering from endless supply chain attacks. Trust me, security issues in NPM are indeed eternal. One of the truly fascinating features of the attack is that it behaves like a true worm and it doesn't stop at the first infected package. The code is designed to republish itself into other NPM packages owned by the compromised maintainer. This cycle allows the malware to continuously infect every package a maintainer has access to, so as soon as someone installs it, the worm executes, replicates and pushes itself further into the ecosystem. And this brings us to November 24th, when Shai Hulud launches yet another supply chain attack. This time around, the worm injects two malicious files called setup bun and bun environment, which are then triggered by adding a new pre-install script. What's interesting now is that the attackers are installing and relying on the bun runtime. The malicious code follows almost the exact steps of harvesting local and cloud credentials, publishing them to public repositories with an updated description, and then attempting to self-propagate further. If the worm isn't able neither to replicate nor to exfiltrate data, it attempts to delete the user's home directory, which, if you ask me, is both mean and unnecessary. Sure, go ahead and steal my credentials, use my open API token, and steal my crypto made up money, but please don't make me work to recreate from scratch my production environment. But, what's important to note is that if the worm can't find credentials on your system, the malware doesn't give up. It searches GitHub for stolen credentials from other victims and tries using those, so if you're a victim, your credentials might show up under someone else's GitHub account. The bottom line is that this is yet another incident in a long list of attacks outlining the instability of the NPM ecosystem, which is too big and too slow to be able to react in a meaningful way. For instance, these attacks rely heavily on the pre-install and post-install commands, which are considered a bad practice for a long while. 
Naturally, Node should be able to completely remove these by now, or at the very least sandbox them in a way that prevents arbitrary system access, but it doesn't. And, until something fundamentally changes in the NPM and Node ecosystems, we're going to keep seeing these stories time and time again. If you enjoyed my rambling about software topics, you should check out one of these videos next. Please don't forget to violently smash all the buttons YouTube is throwing at you these days, and until next time, thank you for watching.